is great to have all of you on here. Thank you for coming. Uh, and I want to get started promptly. Just a quick uh, front-loading expectations. I'm sure Beth uh, talked about front-loading. That seems to be one of her favorite words, but just setting up for success. Um, I hope that you all came ready to participate. I can see most of you have your cameras on. That means you're ready to play, which is great. Um, if you can't or would not like to participate in any games, please let me know and rename yourself on Zoom to put a Z in front of your name. And then I just know that you, you would not like to participate and I won't include you in any breakout rooms, but I might ask you to turn your camera off at some points just because that'll add to the mystique of the games and you'll see that in a second. Uh, I hope that you will expect a little bit of childhood wonder here. We are camp people after all. So this is our time to be focused on us. We get to be the goofy ones. We get to be the competitive ones. So I hope you bring that spirit. Um, you are in it to win it and in it to have fun together. Don't worry about taking any notes for this session. I'm going to give you this whole slide deck. I might have the instructions up on screen. I might keep uh, my screens over here in case you see me looking over here. I'm not ignoring you. You're all on this screen for me. Um, but you'll get this slide deck and we will probably run out of time. So if we don't get to everything or you have more questions, that's totally fine. You can email me. Um, Jennifer will send the slide deck out and my contact info. Email me anytime. I'm actually not working out of camp this summer. So that gives me uh, a bit of an advantage that I can answer an email if needed. Perfect. So I think that Jennifer covered pretty much everything that I would say here. Um, so I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, which is uh, our biggest city in the province, but not the capital of Canada. Uh, capital of Ontario is Toronto. Uh, I've been working at camp since I was 15. I, the camp bug bit me when I was 10 years old. And even though I missed home desperately uh, when I was 10, I was able to stick it out thanks to a great loving camp counselor, camp staff like all of you. Uh, who kept me around and that kept me in camping for years to come. And since I've joined the team at Go Camp Pro, uh, Beth and Travis and a bunch of other camp professionals just trying to help people share resources and make our industry better. Uh, I also include here that I was deemed at my bachelor party in 2018, the useless games champion. I have been a lover of games for a long time, whether it be Crokinole, which I think might be a uniquely Canadian game, or whether it be... Um, uh, cards or bowling, five pin bowling is where I initially found that love. And it's, I'm very good at games that don't, you know, like aren't televised that I'm not actually, you're not going to win money from some days and that, but I think that's, those are camp games, right? So uh, I am honored to share these virtual camp games with you, you awesome people who are leading kids through this very, very strange summer, um, but very, very necessary summer for their development. So thank you. Okay, let's get set up. So uh, a couple of things that we need to do have for this uh, to all work out is that I need to know that you know where the reactions are. Can you show me that you can give me a thumb up or an applause using the Zoom reactions? I think we might have some people on phones, which is totally okay. That might work. You might have some restrictions, but that's okay. No problem. Good. Uh, we see, I saw some thumbs and I saw some claps. If you're on your phone, good work. We got it. Okay. We're all in together. Number two, this one might not work if you don't have, uh, if you're on a phone, but that's okay. In the um, gallery view. So you'll need to navigate to one of my screens at the top, right? You'll see three blue dots. And in that you can click hide non video participants. If you actually click it on someone who doesn't have their video on, maybe I'll turn my video off so you can click on my screen. If you click those three blue dots and click hide non video participants, I should disappear. Raise your hand if you are having trouble finding that option. Yes, and I believe is that sorry is that Tammy there. I, uh, I just can't see names right now. Yeah. So if you, if you're on a mobile phone, that is going to be hard to find. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually possible. So don't, don't sweat it too much. Um, we'll get you in for as much as you can. It's just to add a little bit of flair. That's all. Um, and I'll turn my camera back on. So I should appear. Um, we have a hand up. No hand. Okay, you put your hand up for a reaction. Good. Good. That just adds a bit of dramatic flair. Then when someone gets eliminated, all of the cameras will turn off and it'll be like the last person standing. But the, uh, a reminder for these games, your participants have to do it too. You as the host don't control that for everybody. Okay, perfect. 
Uh, number three is know how to pin a video. This is a, a Zoom skill that has become fairly uh, universal, but if you don't know how to do that, you're going to go to the three dots on someone's screen and click pin. And that just means that no matter what happens, it won't necessarily, their, uh, their video won't disappear, but you can go back into gallery view at any time. Okay. I think we're ready to start a game. I think. And I think y'all are ready too. We got some cameras on, we're ready to play. So we're going to start off with a very easy one. You'll notice on my slides here, um, when I do have them up, I kind of have them classified into who is participating. Is it like individual participation or are they working as a group? What level of competition is it? Is it cooperative or a little bit competitive? Do we play in large groups or breakout rooms? And is it easy, medium, or hard? So this one's a nice, easy game. Let's get playing right away. So what I'd like you to do, I'm going to stop sharing. Perfect. Should have quick access to our reaction buttons. We are going to play thumb or applause. The way that this game works is I'm going to start. I'm the leader. And I'm going to say three, two, one, go. On go, you will either put up the thumbs up reaction. Can I see your thumbs up reaction, please? Perfect. Or I, or you can choose to put up the clapping reaction. Please put up the clapping, the clapping reaction. And sometimes if kids are having trouble finding those reactions, I'll just say, you know, put a thumb up or, or the, the clapping, praying, clapping signs. I'm not really sure what that is, but you know, if you are matching the leader, if you are matching the leader, you are eliminated and you will turn your camera off. Or if you're going for the non-competitive version, uh, you can will collect points. But we're going to be a little competitive. I think we, we're up for that challenge. So what's going to happen is on the count of three, I will say three, two, one, go. You will pick either the clap or the thumbs up. If you're matching me, you're eliminated. And if whoever is still remaining, I will pass off the leadership to you. Then you will say three, two, one, go, and then put up a reaction and we'll play until we have about one or two standing. Any questions? Pretty simple. Let's get started. Okay. Everyone should be hovered over the clap or the thumb. Here we go. Three, two, one, select. Okay. If you clap, please turn your camera off. And if you have that high non-video participants, you are going to disappear from the screen and it's going to look a little bit smaller and a little bit scarier. If you didn't see that high non-video participants, you just click the top left or top right three blue dots on someone whose camera is off and they will disappear. If you want to turn it back on eventually in the view on the top right is where you turn it back on. Anyway, I would love to pass it off to Heather. Would you be our next leader? So you'll want to unmute and three, two, one, go and pick a reaction for us. Sounds good. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God. So Heather wins. Game, game over. Heather wins. Heather's the champion. Let's give Heather a round of applause. Pop those cameras on and let's celebrate for Heather. You can either clap. You can do the um, American Sign Language symbol for applause, which looks like this. Feel free to do that for people. Um, that is great. Uh, and I, that's we're going to leave it at that. I know some of you are competitive and you're like, I got out in the first round. I want to keep playing. We're going to keep on plowing through. That is Thumber Applause. Very easy, very simple for kids. You can expand this game with older ones to include more of the Zoom reactions. You have the heart, you have the laughing, crying face. The only thing to keep in mind is that if a participant is on uh, a Chromebook, they won't have the full gamut of reactions. They have to go into the participants tab and they have speed up, slow down, Sometimes they have yes and no, depending on what version of Zoom they're in, but that is, um, so those are some modifications and it, it, the game takes a lot longer when you have four or five or more to choose from. Okay, great. Let's move on to number two here. Number two is called E-Mirror. This is one of my favorite large group games where we just get to uh, be weird together because being weird together is kind of what camp is all about. So thank you for being weird with me here today. So what I'd like you to do is make sure that you are in gallery view. Um, and if just to make sure you know how to do that, top right of Zoom where you might see view, um, we are going to uh, make sure you're on gallery view. So you should see 4, 8, 12, almost 16, 15 videos. Give me a thumbs up if you're in gallery view. All right, always good to check understanding with kids because they might not know. Good, thumbs up, real thumbs up, virtual thumbs up, both are acceptable. Okay, what is gonna happen is when, uh, what I'd like you to do is in your head, pick one person on this, uh, on this call, but keep it secret, like in your head and be like sneaky about it. Like I wanna see some like squinty eyes, like you're, you're choosing 
you're choosing somebody, who's it going to be? Give me a, a real life thumbs up and hold it up when you've got that person, when you've got who that person is. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, this is great. So what's going to happen is the goal of this game is to copy your partner. So it might actually help. There's not many people playing, but I might recommend times you pin the video of your partner um, so that you don't lose them. And then you pin them and go back to gallery view. I know that's kind of weird, but if you pin them, it keeps them. So my person, it's not Heather, I swear. My person is at the top left of my screen, but I'm back in gallery view. Because being in gallery view, you can see everyone and it's a little more fun. Okay. What happens is when I say three, two, one, go, Everyone must make some sort of motion with their hands or their head, and it needs to be a distinct kind of motion. So I, if I'm here, I'm going to move here, and I might put a hand up here. Just something, something weird. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Then the moment after people make their move, you need to start copying your partner. So if my partner has moved like this, I am going to move from here to here. The goal of this game is I'm going to give you about 20 seconds. It's super fast. 20 seconds to try and figure out who is copying you while you are still copying your partner. Okay. I know that's a little weird. So I'm watching, I'm watching, not Ashley. Ashley's not my partner. I might be watching Dave. And if Dave moves, I move, but then I'm also looking around the screen to try and find somebody else. Does that make sense? When we are done, I'll let you throw it in the chat who you think your person was. And we can evaluate based on that. This one's just for fun. No points. Are you ready? So the first step when I say three, two, one, go is you make a move. As soon as I say go, you follow your partner the way that they move, but you have to make your own unique move first. On your marks, get set, go. So try and keep looking. Keep looking, but keep acting. Make sure you're following your partner. And the funny thing is we end up having like three people doing. <laughs> Good. Okay. And pause, put it in the chat. Who do you think the person following you was? Just type their name and put a question mark and uh, you can give a thumb up if that person got it. Whoever our host was, make sure you throw that in the, the public chat. <laughs> Perfect. And if you want to take some time, you could. we could have everyone on mute and you could guess who your person was. I don't know. I don't know who the person was for me. Uh, Mike, I was following you. Thank you for being a great leader. A nice... A nice thing uh, to think about, actually, what I noticed with Mike is that Mike has a virtual background on, which is awesome. I think that's great for a lot of camp reasons. If you're going to be playing a game with hand motions, Mike, if you, Mike, toss your hands up right now, right? We lose your hands a little bit if you're too far back. So being nice and close to the front is sometimes helpful. Or if you're able to turn, turn it off for something, that's great. I love that. Yeah, signs behind me. That's why I was trying to be camp appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, we, we are all, we, we understand the stress level that's going on in the camp world right now. I, I, I get it, folks. It's all good. Okay, here we go. So uh, I want to quickly just zoom out on this and um, give you an opportunity because we're going to have time, it looks like, to get through these. So I want to give you an opportunity to just give some feedback, some questions, some wonder about if there's anything that you noticed uh, or had questions or anything that you saw that I did that was intentional that you would do in your own practice when leading these games. Um, and no is an okay answer. Totally fine. Feel free to just, uh, you can throw your hand up or just unmute yourself. That's fine. We're a pretty small group. Okay. I noticed you're calling the participants by name and just kind of made you feel more included. Yes, thank you. One of the, one of the greatest gifts we can give to a child is to use their name. It helps them feel seen, feel, helps them feel heard. And the best thing about Zoom is that their name is always there. It's like a name tag that's on them all the time. So use that to your advantage. And you'll notice that at the start of the Zoom call, I, those, that was one of my expectations, that please have your name, whatever you want uh, people to call you. And if kids want to be called Kalamazoo, and if that's okay with your camp policies, then call them Kalamazoo. Totally fine, in my opinion. Um, 
perfect. Okay, pretty straightforward games to get started. They'll get a little more complicated as we go. I want to quickly talk about why is it important to play games, which seems like a ridiculous question to ask. Um, but let's remember what world that our campers are coming from this year. In my non-campy life, I teach at a school four days a week. And I, we are all online right now in Toronto. It is a very different situation than many other places in North America right now. But we have been online for the past nine weeks almost, which has been kind of wild. These kids are coming from a school environment where everything is structured. There's a curriculum. There's an agenda. There's things that need to get done. And at camp, you know, there's, there, is, there isn't not an agenda. But the kids don't know that. It's fun all the time for these kids. And we want to take advantage of that. Because even though we are in these squares, these rectangles on a screen together, this is our chance to connect with each other. And this, this summer program that you are running for your campers, this is their chance to connect with other kids. And you'll notice that a lot of these games are going to involve looking at each other and interacting with each other and talking to each other and copying each other. That is the point of these things. It is one thing we could play, you know, there are those like Jackbox games that you can get on, on Steam, or you might've seen those before. We want to get kids interacting with each other. This is different than the outside world. So let's focus on those things that are going to keep those connections flowing. Also, the idea, these are called back pocket games, that verbiage, uh, Michael Brandwine, a lot of great camp people use that. These are games that you can just pull out. I would give uh, I have a little like write-up sheet about a six-page PDF or the slideshow. I would give this to every camp counselor that I'm working with. And during staff training, I would play these games with them because first of all, it's games. We love playing games. But then they know how to bust these out at a moment's notice and they're intentionally filling time. If someone's internet cuts out, like my internet might cut out and um, I have a backup ready to go. But I hope that with the games you'll learn, somebody can pick up on one of these and start playing them Well, in the time it takes me to get back on here. Um, this is also a great way to teach Zoom skills, right? We have so far have learned gallery view. We have learned pinning a video. Um, we have learned the video off thing, video on, muting ourselves. We've done a lot of skill building in this. Uh, again, kids and CITs can take on leadership of these. These are easy enough that they can run. So why not let them run them? And then of course, it's fun. We are in May. It is uh, gut check time for summer camp professionals all around the world. And we need to remind ourselves sometimes that it is okay to play. And there are a lot of rules and regulations and different things that are happening with the online world. We have to remember that it's camp at the end of the day. So let's treat it like camp. Okay, that's enough talk. Let's keep playing. Uh, I wanna actually, sorry, before we do that, I wanna show you this cool resource uh, that you can use for some get to know you games and activities. Um, some people in, in the game world of like intentional adventure-based gaming, they say what we did at the start, um, those are called de-inhibitizers. De-inhibitizers are easy to get into. If you were in real life, you would play like everybody's it tag or a game that requires very little instruction, but is fun and gets people smiling and going. And then you move into get to know you games, right? We don't just circle up and start saying our names first. We play first and then get into it. So this, uh, what I always have with me when I'm leading a game session is I have two things. I have a deck of cards and I also have uh, my bag of dice. And in my bag of dice and my deck of cards, I have a resource that goes with it, which I will send to you, don't worry. Um, and that is called the Roll the Dice Icebreaker. And of course, it's going to take time to load. Um, but what these are, these are icebreaker questions. I have six times six. So 36 icebreaker questions that are based on dice rolls. So for instance, um, let's roll the dice here together. Uh, would somebody be willing to be a, a, a willing participant to answer a question about themselves that's pretty low key. Can I see a hand up of someone who's willing? Perfect. Knuckles, I will I will pick on you. Thank you. Uh, ben, use the virtual raise the hand. I appreciate that. I'm going to roll the dice twice, Knuckles, and whatever it lands on, and then whatever it lands on second will be the question that you answer. Are you ready? More fun when you can see the dice. We'll get to that in a second. So the first number was a six. So we'll scroll down to six. Six, the, the second number six is always silly six. So something weird might happen. Um, we'll see. The second number was two. So Knuckles, would you rather have a head as wide as your shoulders currently are or shoulders as wide as your head currently is? Um, I would rather have a head as wide as my shoulders currently are. Okay. And if you would agree with Knuckles, maybe give him some applause. If you would agree with him, would you rather your head? Yeah. 
Yeah, some people might be on team others. Some people might be on team big shoulders or team small shoulders, and that's and that's okay. Um, awesome. So that is uh, the roll the dice icebreaker questions. So 36 questions, but if you don't have a dice, uh, you can get them really cheap on Amazon. I found this great website that you should check out called playingcards.io. Again, this will be in the slide deck for you to go to, and you can literally make your own board game. They have tons of like predetermined games like Backgammon and Crazy Eights and President and a ton, ton of those games. But very simply, I made these two things. This is a, a six digit spinner where you just click it and it's going to randomize between one and six. So it's just like a dice roll. So we could play the roll the dice icebreaker and I could say, okay, knuckles, number four, number two, and you would answer the four, number two question. So that's, and it's very easy to make. I can even send you this template, but you'll be able to figure it out. The other game that I, with my deck of cards that sometimes I pull out, um, nice because you can see these ones. I can kind of just shuffle the deck and pick a card. Um, this one is very simple. You pick a card and you answer the number of things based on the suit. So the 10 of clubs would be 10 things you're grateful for. And you could either make ask, ask one person to do it, or you say, okay, let's get through 10 things that we're grateful for as a group. So those are just some very easy get to know you ones. I'll send you some more in the resource. I'm going to get back to kind of the games where we're um, playing and interacting together, but I didn't want to leave those out because it is a, an important step in growing community with campers together. Perfect. Okay, we're going to play Mime Detective. Um, Mime Detective is a classic camp game modified for the Zoom world. We're going to keep it kind of easy, recognizable, and then we'll get harder and harder as we go on. So the way that Mime Detective is going to work is that we have, this is the classic game where um, kids are sitting in a circle, one person leaves, and then it's kind of a follow the leader game and determine who that leader was. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, I'll explain the game fully. The way that it works is I'm going to take one willing volunteer and I'm going to magically transport them into the waiting room. They're going to disappear. And uh, what's going to happen is while they are gone, we are going to pick one person to be our uh, head mime. You're going to be the head mime because we will all be on mute once it starts. But for instance, if I was the head mime, I would raise my hands and magically everyone else's hands would raise too. And they would match mine exactly. Magically, it would, it'll happen. Just watch. Look how magic it is. Everyone's hands raise because I'm the head mime. So everyone's hands raise when my hands raise. Almost everyone. Good. And if, and if all of a sudden my hands start twinkling a little bit, everyone's hands are going to start twinkling just a little bit. And in these subtle actions, you're going to start following me. And you want to be really quick as you're following because there's a little bit of internet delay between here, between uh, Toronto, Ontario, and the Southern United States. So you need to be quick and be ready to change because the person that's coming back is going to be looking out for the person who is the head mime. And they get three guesses to figure out who the head mime is. Good work. Those of you still following me, well done. Okay. Would anybody like to be our mime detective for this game? I'm looking for one willing participant who will be whisked safely away. Ben, I see that raised finger. Thank you. We're going to send you away. We're going to pick one. I'll let you back in once we have started. Put in waiting room. Okay. All right. Who would like to be our head mime? So you're going to make an action. We're going to follow you and you're going to subtly change them. And hopefully we can throw Ben off the scent. It can't be me. Okay, that's Dave. Dave, everyone, uh, it might help to pin Dave's video. Undercover leader, says Tammy. Yes, absolutely. Um, do, do, do. So I'm going to pin Dave's video, which will help me remember where it is. The nice thing, when you play this game in real life, you can, um, you can really tell who the kids are looking at. Kids aren't very subtle. Uh, kids are great in a lot of ways, but they're not very subtle. Uh, so this is a great way. Make sure you pin them and go back to gallery view. Uh, Dave, you're going to start your actions. Make sure you're on mute though, because sometimes if you switch to a, an action, it'll give away. Hey, no, you, I got a, I got a message that you had asked me to unmute. So yes. Per, oh, did I? Okay. My bad. You can mute yourself back and mute. we will follow you. And once we're following, we'll get Ben back in. Okay, here he comes.
Ben, feel free to, to just call it out whenever you have a guess. Oh, this is so hard. <laughs> yeah, I was confused about that part, like the lying about Is it Dave? Yes, congratulations, Ben. Not not as easy as sometimes it is. When you have a, a the larger the group, the harder the game is. Um, I played this with a bunch of grade eight students, which are uh, 12 in Canada at least, and they were flummoxed. It took them a, quite a long time to figure out who it was. Um, even though the, Dave did an amazing job of being not very subtle. If Dave was suddenly like this, you would really see that difference. So subtle changes are important. Perfect. Thank you, Dave. Can we give uh, Dave a, a bit of a round of applause? And Ben, a round of applause for being our mime detective. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and Tammy, you're totally right. We call games a million different things in the camp world. Uh, undercover leader, mime detective, rhythm detective, whatever it is. Um, the, the rhythm detective, I find, doesn't. if you're like making sounds, it doesn't work super well. That's why I like the non- sound participants. Also good for kids that have sensory things that a, a lot of overwhelming sounds might be too much for them. Okay, uh, let's do our questions, noticings, modifications, anything you would change, do differently, anything specific that you saw that uh, you would take into your practice? No is an okay answer. Okay, cool, let's move forward. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I think these are all, I'll probably say that about every single one, but we are going to play a game called Virtual Zoo. The way that Virtual Zoo works, uh, again, this is kind of, a, this is a great partner game. It's cooperative. You can play it in breakout rooms, but we're just going to do it in a large group because it's really fun to watch other people playing these. So what's going to happen is I'm going to partner you up. Uh, so there, there are some quicker, there are some other ways to partner people up, but I'm just going to do it verbally for this time. So Dave and Tammy, you two are partners, so you might help to pin each other's videos, but again, go back to gallery view. Heather and Marigold, you'll be partners. Ashley and Jennifer. Uh, Julianne and Mike. Knuckles and Dawn. Katie and Edith. And Ben and myself. Okay. In this game called Virtual Zoo, there are four animals that you need to know. So please join me in making these four animals. We have a, uh, because, because I'm Canadian, we have the great Canadian caribou, like this. Please show me your great Canadian caribou. You don't have to pick great Canadian caribou, but you can think of me while you play this game and be great Canadian caribou. Uh, you, can, you can also be the elephant, which is like the hardest stretch ever for me, but you could do this one. You could be the elephant. Again, make your own animals, but the elephant's kind of ridiculous and fun. Uh, you can be the monkey, where you kind of grab your ears and puff out your cheeks. You can be a monkey. Uh, you can also be the school that I teach at. Our, our mascot is a shark. So I have the baby shark, which looks like this. Great. And they love the song Baby Shark. And I always tell them that the camp world did it first. Um, anyway, so we have uh, ready, uh, rapid speed. Here we go. Show me your Canadian caribou. Show me your elephant. Show me your Canadian caribou. Show me your baby shark. Show me your Canadian caribou. Good, you did it and didn't follow me. Good work. And show me your monkey. Good work. Okay, so <laughs> y'all are great. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so we have our, does everyone have a designated partner? Yes, and you've all pinned each other's videos, hopefully. Not 100% not necessary. The way that this game works is we as a pair are working to get to, let's call it five points. You get a point by matching your partners. So Ben and I are partners here. So what we do, Ben, is we are gonna, um, with our hands out towards the camera, we're gonna count down. We're gonna go three, because we're all gonna be off mute, or we're gonna be muted. So we have to do it uh, in front of us. So we'll, in a rhythm, we'll go three, two, one. After that, we pick one of the four animals. That's right. And our goal is to match and get to, uh, let's say, five points. When we, when we make it together, we give each other a high five or a high 10, and then we go back and we start again. If we don't get it, you can give an aw shucks and you can keep going. Any questions? Okay, you have your mission. Let's see who get, and once you get out, once you get your five points, jump off of mute and go banana pants so that we can celebrate your win. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Go ahead and start. Ben, here we go.
We got to have some people getting close. Okay, keep going. Oh, yeah. We got Whoa. five. <laughs> nice. Me. Katie, is that Dave? You got it. Katie, you got it. Tammy, that was you and your partner. Good work, everybody. Thank Never you for playing. I got it. Um, good stuff. Any, any noticings, any modifications that you would make for this one? Well, it seems like it's going to be too easy that your partner can cheat, but because of the delay, you don't realize they're not actually looking at you. I mean, you, they don't know what you're doing. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. Ben and I, Ben and I were a little delayed from each other, which means I was kind of following him, but I don't know, Ben, from your perspective, if I gave it away every time or what happened there, but I think it was because we, well, clearly I didn't give it away every time because we were terrible. We only got two points. Well, because the counting is also delayed. So they actually, you're already doing what you're going to do. And when they've been, yeah, it works. I, I'm surprised it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised is what I'm going for in this session, Dave. So thank you very much. Uh, great. Any other noticings, wonder about? Again, pick your own animals, make them regional. Um, you can make them critters at camp. That would be kind of fun. Um, but uh, I, I half insist that you use the Canadian caribou. So, all right. Okay, now we're going to get into one that's a little more tricky, but this is a great social game, and I love playing this with kids. What I'm going to do um, in a moment but not yet is I'm going to set you up in a breakout rooms um, of three people each. And it'll take me a little bit of a second, but I want to introduce the game first and then give you about two minutes to play. Um, hold on, let me see where I'm at in my list. I, I might change my plan here. No, I think we're okay. I want to give you a little bit of time to see the, a good breakout room game. So you will be in groups of three-ish, three or four. And uh, this game is called Change Three Things by a guy named Jim Kane. If you don't know Jim Kane, one of the best uh, game facilitators out there. Um, I have the, had the pleasure of having dinner with him, and he is just as pleasant in real life. Um, Definitely like a celebrity moment for me. Uh, okay. The way that Change Three Things works is you and a partner or a group of three in your breakout room are going to have a minute with your camera off. Actually, no. I want to do this all together. You got to change my plan. I told Jennifer, I told you there were going to be some left turns. We're going to play this all together just for fun. I'm going to give you some new partners. Um, and so you can play this with your partner. What will happen is when I say go, you will turn your camera off. And something in your background or on your person, three things will need to change, okay? Um, so look around your background right now and think about what those might be. Because first, once I give you your partner, I'm going to give you one minute to memorize what is in their background and what they look like. Which way is their hair parted? How high are their glasses on their nose? Uh, where, what is, where is the curtain behind them? Some of you might not have very modifiable backgrounds or so you need to be, I'll give you some time to think now. What will happen is there'll be a minute once the camera come, once that minute is up, I'll tell you to turn your camera back on. And each of you in the chat, you can private message each other. will have a chance to, um, Michael, kick some butt at your virtual staff training. Great to see you, buddy. Thank you for being here. Uh, you, you'll have three guesses or guess the three things that your person has changed. Does that make sense? Pretty simple. Let me give you your partners. Okay, I'm going to do this by tapping your screens. Everyone who's playing his cameras on. That's great. Okay, Dave and Edith. Let's go Ben and Tammy. Heather and Katie. Dawn and Marigold. Mike and Ashley, and Jennifer and Julianne. Is that everybody? Sweet. The other way that you can get partners in groups really fast is you can set up breakout rooms without actually opening them. And then that'll just like bing, 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 bing people into partnerships. But this is, there's enough of us that this is perfect. Okay. So pin your pointers, or <laughs> I said pointer because Ben Pointer just popped in the waiting room. Uh, pin your partner's video so that you can get to know them. And I will give you one minute, starting now with some music to memorize your partner's background. One minute. And what better song to give you than this one?
Okay, get ready. When the music stops, turn your camera off and change three things. Boom. Okay, camera's off. Change three things. I'll give you to the count of the other, the, uh, one more round of the Jeopardy song to uh, change three things. That's going to be about 30 seconds. Sixteen more seconds. One six. Hopefully you've changed three things. When you come back, you'll pop it into the chat. Perfect. Okay. Pop those cameras back on as soon as you are done and you are going to try and figure out three things. It's really hard to do with all of you. I really tried. Guess the three things in the chat. You can send a private message to your partner. Um, if you don't know how to send a private chat, there's a little blue window that might say everyone right now on the chat, and you can um, change that to just your partner. And I'll give you one more round, half of a Jeopardy song to get your guesses in before we move on. Okay. Did uh, and I like to do this with kids to give them an opportunity to shout out and compliment their partner. Did anyone's partner do something particularly sneaky that you want to uh, shout out and appreciate? It is good to compliment each other. Feel free. No, but but Marigold got everything right. Ah, that's a good. Thank you, Don. They're very good. Let's give Marigold a nice uh, round of applause. Yeah, good yeah, work. Yeah. It was something. really tough because my background is blurred. Oh, uh, you got the blur effect on. Yep. Yeah. That's a good good note about virtual backgrounds too. For this kind of thing, you're only restricted to things on your person. Okay. Good. And and like I said at the start, we are getting kids to look at each other, and that's not something you do. You really look at someone when you're on Zoom. Like, are you looking at me right now? Or are you kind of just looking around? Maybe you're looking at me, but that's just because I'm obnoxious and move around a lot. But kids often don't take the time to look at each other. I notice that with my students all the time, and I will play this game. It also actually really helps them to reframe their face. Not that, like kids are usually like camp kids are pretty usually into it, but I have students like all day. I'm literally dealing with this. Kids being like, I swear, I'm, I am swear, I'm paying attention. I'm not texting on my phone. So that, this game kind of forces them to keep their head in frame. Uh, just being sneaky. That's all. Okay. Any questions? Any wonder abouts? Any things you would change from change three things? Okay. We are cruising, folks. Okay, I'm going to do the very dangerous thing. The thing they say you should never do on a Zoom call. Get ready. I'm not sure if you're ready for this. We are all going to go off mute. I know, I know, I know, dangerous, very dangerous. Please uh, jump off of mute for this next game. And I'd like you to say, uh, in whatever unique way for yourself, I'd like you to say hello, in whatever unique way that is. Hola. Hello. Michiwa. Que pasa? Hello. Hi. 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 Yabo. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. We have different languages. We have different inflections. Uh, all of that is great. Okay. This game is hard, but this is a group challenge that I think no other people could accomplish except for camp professionals. This is a classic team building game, but made harder because of our virtual world. Um, but a great one to do. After we have built up, we have so far we have done de-inhibitizers with kids, right? They've gotten their, their goofies out. We have done some introductions, some get to know you's. We've done some more games with partners to help them build connections with individuals. And now we're gonna work on a group challenge together, um, moving into our, um, our storming phase, or maybe you could call this the performing phase of our team building cycle. What we are gonna do, our goal is to count to five. Sounds simple, but the way the constraints are, some of you classic camp people and know exactly what's coming, but that's okay. Count to five works like this. One person will start. They will say one. Somebody else will say two. 
somebody else will say three, somebody else will say four, and somebody else will say five. No person may say more than one number. So I can't go two, three. The numbers have to be in order. No body language. The reason we're all off mute is because we can't cheat by like taking ourselves off mute and then being like, oh, they're going to talk next. Trust me, I've seen all the moves in this game. Um, and if someone talks at the same time or says a number out of order, this is what we do. We go like this. We can laugh, but we celebrate our mistakes. We celebrate mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. So we'll do some virtual applause. And then once everyone's hands are down, that is consent for the next person to start the game and say one. Our goal is to count to five and we'll see how it goes. Are there any questions before we begin? One. Two. Three. Ah, I heard two threes. Yay, yay. One, two, three, four, four. Ooh, four. That's a new record. Woo! One, two, three. <laughs> ben, I like your strategy. Of Ben is holding up his hands and holding up a virtual hand. Now I appreciate your creativity, Ben. And Ben might be uh, struggling with some slower internet, which makes it harder for this game. Um, but no pre-communication of any sort. No hands, no virtual hands, no nothing. One. Two. 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 <laughs> One. One. <laughs> One. One. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Is that two people? Yep. Good. We, hey, we've gotten to four. We're pretty good. Let's let's give it a couple more tries. One. One. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Four. Five. <laughs> four and a half. Five. We'll call it. Good work, everybody. Give yourself a round of applause. Hey. The, the, on my slide right now, here, I'll, I'll show you what my slide says. Um, it says count to five or 10. Uh, we are going to keep it at five because, uh, we all, the, but the, you know, in about five attempts, we made it to five or four and a half at least, which is pretty good. Um, this game is challenging, but the perfect game to play with a group of kids. And this is my favorite for, um, when we need to fill a couple moments, once you've built the language in, all I need to say is one. You know, and the game I begins, two, three, four, five. Well, I'm, I'm going to ruin it for us. But yes, that's that's a way that we can just kind of add a little bit of fun into it. Okay. You might, uh, you are welcome to mute yourselves again. Um, there will be some unmuting in here. Um, and, uh, you know, I like, I, I'll just give my quick, this is my quick thing about muting and unmuting. I think we are past the stage now where we need to worry about background noises with kids. If If mics are on, if it's a time to have your mics on, keep your mics on and you don't need to feel ashamed for any background noise that you have. Um, because kids are, remember that our kids are coming from many different backgrounds. We don't know what their home life is like. We don't want them to feel ashamed. That's why even though at the start of the session, I strongly encourage you to have your video on, there's a little bit of consent there and being very clear about what our expectations are. So we're not excluding anyone, um, but we're keeping them informed ahead of time. And that's why I, I want to, uh, make sure I say how grateful I am to Jennifer uh, for sending that email out this morning because I went, oh my gosh, I want to make sure there's a bit of consent here of people having their cameras on when they join the session. So thank you, Jennifer. And thank you all of you for that. Um, just looking after kids in that way too. Okay. Let's move on to Gotcha. You might have said, said to yourself, Matt, these are all games that I know, and uh, I didn't sign up for games that I know. So this one is one that I have created from scratch. You have never played it before, and it only works on Zoom. I have no idea how it would work in real life. So uh, it does take a bit of extra explanation, though, so your listening ears are appreciated. Similar to last game, or the last couple we played before, you're going to pick a secret person. Again, I, I hope you're like really sneaky as you're picking that person. I want to see the, the sneaky eyes as you're, maybe, maybe there's some consideration of who that might be for you. Jennifer, I like that this is good, good pondering here. One kid in my class, I often will sit like this on a Zoom call. And one kid the other day said, uh, Mr. Hansberger, you're, uh, I can hear your beard. Can you please mute yourself? And I said, yes, Timmy, sorry about that. Um, so anyway, 
that's an aside. Uh, do you have your secret person? Uh, give me a thumb up in real life if you have, if you've picked your secret person. Mine is totally not Julianne, I swear. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. You have your secret person. That's great. The way that this game works, this is when the hiding non-video participants is actually really helpful, but um, we'll, we'll make it work regardless. So the goal of this game is to survive until the end of four rounds. Show me on your fingers how many rounds this will last. Perfect. Obviously, I'm not doing that because I know you don't know, but that's what I do with kids all the time. How many rounds? Four rounds. And rounds will begin with players covering their cameras with their hands. So can you please cover your camera with your hand? Perfect. And then uncover your camera. And it's actually, we want people to, I know it's going to make your, some of your cameras foggy. And anyway, uh, this is important that we do it this way rather than turning your cameras off because um, you'll see in a second. Each round, each of the four rounds, you will have the option of uncovering or keeping your camera covered. Each round will start with everyone's hand covering their camera, okay? You must uncover your camera for two of the four rounds. You can choose. You can go covered, covered, uncovered, uncovered. You can go uncovered, covered, uncovered, covered, however you want to do that. You choose how many times. You can do more if you want, if you're feeling daring, okay? But do you remember who your secret friend is? Do you remember who that person is? It's Mine's definitely not Tammy. It's definitely not. <laughs> what happens is if you and your secret person both have your camera uncovered in a round, you get to unmute yourself and say, gotcha, and then their name. So if Tammy actually was my secret person, she's not. But And Tammy and I both chose, let's do a quick just practice. Everyone cover their camera. And then just Tammy and I, and maybe one other, well, I don't know. Everyone choose, cover, un uncover, or keep covered. Tammy uncovered their camera, and Tammy's, Tammy's also my partner. And I would say, gotcha, Tammy. And Tammy is eliminated then because I got Tammy. Now, remember that somebody could be going for me at the exact same time. So it's daring whether I want to uncover or not. If you get got by that, by a person, even if somebody else got you, turn your camera off and you are eliminated from the game. You want to survive until the end of the fourth round. Does that make sense? Any questions? I know this is, we're, we're upping the complexity level here big time. Okay. Do we unmute your... now or at the end of the, uh, after we get them? Only unmute yourself once you have got your person. Just, it'll, it'll save us any, any confusion. Okay. Uh, sorry, I just said, are we getting points by eliminating people? You are all your seek. Great question, Ben. Um, what I forgot to say is your secret person is your secret person for the entire game. Even if you eliminate that person, you still have to satisfy the number of uh, taking off of your camera because you want to survive. So say I got Tammy in the first round. I still have to uncover it one more time. My only goal is to survive. Okay. Sometimes with kids, I might, if it's an advanced game, I might say, yes, you get an extra point for eliminating your person too, which makes them a little more daring. But in this case, just survive until the end of the game. Okay. Yeah. So I think I was in the, in transition of changing something over and I missed a part. So I was like, in my head, I was just like, why wouldn't you just keep your camera covered for the four rounds, but you have yes. to uncover for two. Correct. You got okay. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Everyone, please cover your camera. Okay, on the count of three, you will choose to reveal or not reveal. And once you, and then if your secret person is also uncovered, unmute and say, gotcha, that person. Ready? Three, two, one, cover or uncover. Edith. No. Got you, Katie. I got you, Edith. <laughs> so Edith can, turn, Edith can turn her camera off. And Katie, I think, also got, 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 is that right? Did someone, did someone, say I didn't Katie? uncover. Oh, no, I didn't you didn't uncover. You didn't uncover, so you're good. You can only okay. get your person if they are uncovered. Oh. That's okay. That's okay. All and right. And if you are uncovered, right? Uncovered. And if you were, sorry, you have to be uncovered and they have to be uncovered. Thank All you. Right. Got it? Okay, that's fine. Round two. Katie knows who to hide from now. Everyone cover up unless you are eliminated. Cover, 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 cover. Okay, this is round two. Three, two, one. Uncover or stay covered. Got you, Katie. Got you, Don. <laughs> Katie and Don, cameras off, please. Okay, cover up for round three. Okay, we have a lot of people still left. Here we go. Three, two, one. Uncover or cover. 
Got you, Jennifer. Hey, f- oh! <laughs> Jennifer, did you get Dave? As well? No, he got me first. It is so funny. He was my person too. Oh, that's okay. Double elimination. Dave and Jennifer, you're both eliminated because we don't want to go first because that, that um, advantages faster internet people. So right. Dave and Jennifer, please turn your camera off. Let's see. We have one more round. And now I have, a, just for example, I have a choice here because I've only uncovered my camera. I've done it twice already, but I haven't got my person yet. So I'm going for my person. So I'm going to uncover, which might give me away if someone picked me. Three, two, one, cover or uncover? Rest of the situation. Gotcha, Ashley. Completely beneficial. Gotcha, Tammy. Oh, all right, everyone, camera's on. Let's give a round of applause to our remainers. Um, my friends, we are at 8.59 and, uh, unfort- I have two more games, but you'll get them in the slideshow. Uh, they're very, those are, they're pretty easy ones, but I did want to get that one in actually three more, but they'll be in the slideshow. Thank you so much for playing with me and for being here. Um, I think Dawn, I'm turning it over to Dawn for some final announcements. And that was so much fun. Thank you so much. Played games that I've never played before on zoom or in person. So Perfect. Thank you. That was great. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Um, We are coming up on our last uh, town hall on Monday, June 7th. We're going to pause over the summer because we know you guys have a lot going on these these next couple of months. Um, But Monday, June 7th, we're going to have Dr. Rafi back to give us a vaccine and um, update and a COVID update. So um, I hope you can join us. That is on a Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And um, really appreciate everybody joining us tonight and playing. This was so much fun. Matt, again, we greatly appreciate you and all you do for kids as well as for us camp professionals. So thank you. And I hope everybody has a great week. Thanks. Let's hear it for Matt, huh? Yeah.